name is Dane Graverson and welcome to this uh, video where I'll give you the top five things you need to know as a SAP PI developer. So uh, I've created this list of these, uh, these things you need to know as a PI developer. Uh, well, early in my career, uh, seven years ago, with, with the PI and or XI exchange infrastructure at that point in time, I was learning from a lot of other people and learning what they're doing, how did they communicate with the business and all this kind of thing, what is really interesting for those guys. Uh, so along the way I've created a, like a list of what it is that I feel find is most important and I've been bouncing this on different people trying to get some feedback on and get get it tuned into some more uh, useful information so let's just get started with it uh, my first thing you need to learn as a PI developer is how to communicate with the business um, I was just talking with one guy at the, at the cantina the other day about how you as a d developer need to communicate with everyone else and he was saying well some people are just like they just want to have the whole full specification of this is what we want you to do this is how it should be done and this uh, is what it should be looking like and then they'll do it and well it's great if you can do that uh, and you have somebody that will be able to specify all the things you need to do in that level but from what I've experienced a lot of all the functional persons or the business side they well they do have some idea of the purpose of this interface is to move this kind of data to this kind of data this interface and they sometimes they cannot explain well we need the this uh, the the invoice number should both be in the header level and on the item level in the reference purchase order number or something like that and that kind of information may be really difficult to understand for, for the business if they don't know what they're going on. And especially it's important for integration developers because, well, you may have a PI, uh, ERP expert that is really good with SD, uh, but he doesn't know how the warehousing system works because that's a different warehousing system they're using and you have to be the one that's translating between the SAP side and the warehousing side and figure out how we can actually communicate correctly with these kind of people uh, so in that perspective the business language is really important for anyone, uh, any PI developers that want to excel in this area um, yeah, and just being able to ask those questions may give you a better understand idea of what you're doing and how it works. Uh, so yeah, go out there, figure out what your business is doing and ask some questions. Maybe take a business course, or do something to, to engage them in more conversation and hopefully you'll learn some about what the business is all about. The second, second thing I have on my list is the advanced adapter engine. When, when first came out, out with 7.1 I think, uh, it was like, Woo, we don't use the app stack anymore. And that was really a good thing because you could make up integrations much faster and easier. But it was still lacking a lot of things and a lot of uh, functionalities that you needed to do successful integrations. So that's why um, I see it as really a key ingredient to know how this is working, what you can do with it. Um, 
So knowing the advanced adapter engine is really key and definitely know what you're capable of on the platform you currently have because with 7.3 you can almost do all the things you can in, in the in integration stack except the PPM and some limited adapters. Uh, so in that perspective it's something that we need to learn much more about how it's using and I think probably also monitoring how can we see how this is working in a good way. The next thing I find really interesting and useful is the message mapping. I know it's not really sexy. Come on. It's just something with some context you're going to to work on and figure out how to make sure it's working. Um, and well, once you have created a couple of I don't know, hundred, uh, I don't know, thousand ma message mapping with different levels, different hierarchies, and stuff like that, you you find some kind of a drift and figure out ah uh, we have this kind of context problem, so it looks like this. Um, I had a, a case where I'm, I'm migrating away from Business Connector solution to PI and well I was looking at some of the code and was like dang this is going to be hard to really make sure it's working and make sure we got all the right lookups and tables and stuff like that. I was like how can you do that in a good way and I started to uh, using XSLT because I thought message mapping in this instance will not make sense because we have too many loops and it'll just be a mess. Uh, I found some limitations to the current the PIS release we are using. Some functionalities was not there and others was and when you ran it, it worked differently depending on what kind of uh, resources you had and sometimes the formatting of the numbers was different I was like I don't think that will be possible to upgrade using that in an easy way so I went back to the message mapping it so far it seems to be working out quite well um, it's not a simply simple mapping but it's it's working and I think it'll be rather useful when when we got it done so that's why I believe that the message mapping is still out there. You need to know the limitations and then you need to know how you can make alternate mappings or different mappings in XSLT uh, if, if the message mapping does not work for you. One other thing that uh, the, the fourth uh, item on the list is do these kind of experiments, figure out what works, what doesn't work. Um, well, you know, we have, if we have done something in a couple of years ago and we have to do some kind of the same things like, hey, I might as well do the same thing again. It's easy, I know what it is, I know the technology and stuff like that, so I'll just do that. But is that what we want? Don't we want to improve ourselves, give our clients, our customers, our users a better experience of what the PR product is about? So maybe if you have three days to a project, why not spend two days sharpening the knife as uh, Stephen Covey is saying in, in his seventh habit. The seventh habit is to sharpen the knife or blade or whatever, the saw. Uh, so you're sure you know the new skills, go on SDN, find some of these uh, different blogs on how to do XPath in, in message mapping, or how to do something weird, uh, maybe not all of these uh, ideas is, is useful in your production system, but it may spawn some uh, ideas and something you can do even better in your next release. And then the last thing I believe uh, you, you have to do to be successful as a PI developer is know uh, how to use scenarios. How can you actually 
implement scenarios in a good way. Um, I see that, well, it probably also ties up to the business. How do you communicate with the business? Uh, and how do you communicate with yourself? Documentation, stuff like that. And in that perspective, I see uh, documentation and, and scenarios as really interlinked. Is it, It's a good way to to express what you want to do and it can be actionable though there's some difference between models and the advanced adapter engine uh, so far so you may not be able to, to configure based on it but it will give a really good example and introduction to what kind of objects you have uh, involved in this process so I encourage you to, to go invest some time in figuring out how to use uh, scenarios, models, or whatever kind of tool you want to use to express this to your business. So that was my top five list. If we just want to recap, so it's uh, learn how to talk with the business, uh, use the advanced adapter engine, uh, message mappings and XSLTs, preferably message mappings, uh, try something new uh, once in a while, and see if that doesn't uh, enhance what you know. And last thing is use integration scenarios uh, or scenarios or models in a way that makes it easier to communicate what you're doing. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you have please post some comments below, uh, we'll be happy to answer them. And until we see you again, goodbye!